today we're going to look at the nitrogen cycle and um, how nitrogen gets taken up by plants and what it gets turned into and how it gets cycled. I'm only going to try and do a chunk of it um, and then in, in future couple of videos I'll do try and do look at other bits because this is a complicated and difficult part of the spec that students do have issues with. Um, right, so let's start off with nitrogen in a form in the soil which it can be taken up across the plant roots. So we have it as um, nitrate in the soil. And we'll talk about where that comes from in a bit. But that nitrate goes through the root hairs um, and then goes up through the plant to the leaves. And once it's got to the leaves, it gets turned into nitrite and then ammonia. And that ammonia then gets used to make two important compounds for the leaf. One is amino acids and the other is nucleotides. Those nucleotides obviously are DNA, RNA and then ATP which is a modified nucleotide. Now the amino acids get turned into protein, the DNA, the nucleotides get turned into DNA, RNA and get used for the growth of the cells and of the plants. So the concept here to remember is that the nitrate is being taken up through the root hairs up and then is being joined with the products of photosynthesis. So you get the plant is taking carbon dioxide from the air, is taking nitrates from the soil and using them to make amino acids, DNA, RNA, ATP and that gets used to make more plant. So now let's consider what can happen to that more plant. So we said that the nitrate gets taken up, gets turned into more protein and more plant. The two options for the plant next are that the plant can then get consumed. So here we have a gigantic bunny rabbit that is going to consume the plant. Or alternately, the plant can just die and go into the ground. Now, the alternatives for the bunny rabbit, neither are too good. Either the bunny rabbit um, dies and gets decomposed, or the bunny rabbit gets eaten by something else, which also then dies and gets decomposed. Ultimately, the nitrogen that was in the, the soil has passed into the plant protein. That plant protein is then either going to the plant is going to die and go to the soil or it's going to be eaten by something that dies and goes to the soil or it's going to come through the rabbit as um, waste. Now this is a part that tends to confuse students. Now the process of decomposition is just the aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration uh, respiration by bacteria of dead matter. And that respiration by bacteria of dead matter involves taking um, the amino acids and deaminating them. So this will be glycine deaminating them. This gets turned into ammonia. and then using this lot for um, respiration. Now this process of decomposition of either the dead plant matter or the dead animal matter is going to end up producing just ammonia. So if we have ammonia in the soil, this is then used by a bacterium. And the bacterium takes the ammonia and turns it into nitrite, NO2 minus. There is then another bacteria that takes that NO2 minus and turns it into nitrate. Now, both of these are processes carried out by aerobic bacteria. And this is important when you consider exam questions which talk about the importance of ploughing or the importance of drainage or the importance of you know, keeping dry aerated soil and the 
those exam questions are coming at it from the angle of the importance of this process because this process is done by things called nitrifying bacteria. Now these nitrifying bacteria are making the nitrogen that is in the ammonia then available to be taken up by the plants again. So the importance of keeping things um, drained and ploughed is that by draining it you're meaning that it's not anaerobic that there is oxygen available in the soil for the decomposers to break down the organic matter the organic matter coming from either the dead plant matter or the dead animal matter or the animal wastes those then produce the ammonia that ammonia is then turned to nitrite and then to nitrate by nitrifying bacteria. Now you do have to know the names of these two nitrifying bacteria. The first one is nitrosomonas, and I'll write that one out. So it is nitrosomonas, which does this ammonia to nitrite step. And then we have nitrobacter, which does the nitrites to nitrate step. Both of these are aerobic bacteria, and both are chemoautotrophs that they're using the energy from the breakdown of the ammonia to nitrite in the case of nitrosomonas and nitrite to nitrate, and in the case of nitrobacter, to um, drive the fixation of carbon dioxide from the air because these are chemoautotrophs, um, not like plants which are photoautotrophs. Okay, so let's try and summarize this again. We start from nitrate, which is in the soil. That gets taken up across the plant root and then into the leaf. In the leaf it gets joined with carbon dioxide from photosynthesis and then that gets used to make more plant So, because it's being turned into amino acids, nucleic acids. Now those plants either die and get decomposed or pass into an animal which dies and decomposed or go through and come out as animal waste which is also decomposed. But the action of decomposers is just the um, respiration of bacteria which are breaking up the amino acids and the nucleic acids and are releasing ammonia. That ammonia is then the source for aerobic respiration by nitrosomonas, which does ammonia to nitrite, and nitrobacter, which does nitrite to nitrate. Both of these are nitrifying bacteria, and then that, the nitrate, can then be taken up by the plant again, and this whole process can continue. We'll stop that there, and in the next video, we'll have a look at some other things.